want to bring up Therese Jurgensen. Uh, Therese and her husband Darren have been in our church for about four years. Would you help me to welcome Therese to the stage? Teresa is an amazing woman of God. Uh, like I said, she's been with us for four years, and the Lord has uh, put it on her heart, tearing her out of the public school system and placing her here to help us build the school. So she's going to share a little bit of that heart with us. So if we turn our heart to her. Thank you. And before I say anything else, there are a number of people here that we'd like to introduce that are going to be our teachers. One of the things that has really, really blessed our hearts are the people of God that have been called to this work, and we're just so excited. Gordon Morris, you can stand up. He's going to be a sixth grade teacher with us and help with middle school. He's a certified teacher. He's taught for 10 years, and then he's also worked in the business world, which, of course, we really, really respect. We're excited about him and welcome his wife today. Who else is working here with us? Anybody else who's been involved in the school, whether you're on the school board, you're teaching? It seems oh. like a lot of those oh, are there's first service. Oh. Artiera. There's Artiera. She's our first grade teacher. Artiera is working on her certification. She's led groups such as Girls on the Run. She also has a health degree of sorts, helps with breastfeeding mothers. She's a beautiful woman of God, and we're really, really excited to have her here with us. Like, I am not kidding. That was one of my biggest, you know, there's, there's always some, you know, concern when you're starting. Like, who are we getting? There's a teacher shortage. There's not a teacher shortage at Calvary Christian Academy. That's we have true. phenomenal teachers. Amen. We're really excited. So I've been involved in the public school for over um, 40 years in one way or another, and in the last 20 years, uh, I became a certified teacher. I started an alternative high school that's still there 20 years later. I've been a dean of students, which basically means I've done discipline for schools up to 1,200 kids at a time. I did all the discipline. I'm a special ed director. I also do TAG, EL. Um, I've also worked at the Department of Ed. I'm a principal. I've been an elementary principal, and I'm a superintendent of a Midland Community School District, something that I really, really enjoy doing and really very, very difficult for me to leave. Mm -hmm. And so what happened was, actually, like four years ago, we started talking about this school. Right. I had no idea that it would move as fast as it did, and I really struggled leaving the public school because I've always believed that the public school system is the greatest mission field in the, in the history of the world. You don't have to go out overseas because right. the world has come to the school. So those of you who are working still in the public school or you have your kids in public school, um, you know, God bless you, especially those that are teachers or paras that are working. Because it, it's, uh, I used to think it was the greatest mission field. And I'll be real honest with you, I now think it's a war zone. Amen. I really believe it's a war zone. It's a, a war against our children. And again, I say that with love and grace for anyone who's still working there. I'm still working there. So the Lord spoke to me very clearly one night. I was really struggling with this, and it was out of Amos 7, 8. And the Lord said unto me, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, a plumb line. Then said the Lord, behold, I will set a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will not again pass by them anymore. And the Lord showed that to me, and then it was confirmed through Ray, who also teaches Sunday school here. I don't know if, there he is. Ray confirmed it, really freaked me out. I knew the Lord was talking to me because I was just dreaming about it the night before. And so I knew that I, I had to submit to God. And once I did, just the joy that followed was exciting. So today, I'm really here today to talk to you about why you should consider sending your children or your grandchildren or someone you know to Calvary Christian Academy. And there's three reasons why, very clear to me, that I know about the public school and what's currently going on. So, like I said, I believe the public school is the greatest mission field, but now it has become a war zone. I worked at Iowa Department of Education for three years, and I also have my own personal uh, business, preventing, intervening, and investigating bullying harassment. In fact, I've trained many schools across the state of Iowa what it, how to investigate bullying and harassment. So, here's what's really going on. So, there's a lot of research behind bullying and harassment. And there's three things that I always think about with this. I used to think like the kids that were targeted were really the ones that got really, really uh, long-term effects. But in fact, the kids that are the most severely harmed by bullying harassment, sure the bully is harmed, sure the target can be harmed, but it's the kids that sit by and watch it happen right. when it keeps happening again and again and again, because bullying by very nature is repeated. 
What's even worse now today, and I was just talking to a, uh, a new friend of mine who's in the public school, it's not just the kids that are being bullied and harassed and, and victimized, it's your teachers. Right. The Department of Justice has overtaken Cedar Rapids public school system, and if kids are, and it, it's all over Iowa, if kids are hurting kids or hitting kids or beating kids up or hurting your teachers, you can't do anything about it. In fact, you can let them run out in the street. You can't stop them. And so kids are watching this. Uh, we interviewed a teacher that's on Family Medical Leave Act because she's been so uh, beat up by some kids and then watching them also beat other kids and you can't stop it. It's actually become a norm that this is not unusual, right? You ever heard of the room clear law? We can't clear rooms anymore. We used to clear our rooms to get away from these kids. Well, you can't do that anymore. You have to try to remove that child. So it's a war zone. So it's not just bullying harassment, it's actually the violent behavior that for some reason we've adopted and accepted. The other thing I'm really concerned about in the public schools, I've watched it over the last 40 years and myself as an educator, is the whole movement of uh, AI, mm -hmm. which stands for what is it again? Artificial intelligence. Thank you, AI. AI is taking over our public schools. We're going to teach kids how to use AI, uh, how to make things happen through AI. Some people are doing accounting through AI. But really, what we're going to do at Calvary Christian Academy is we're going to teach kids how to think, how to Amen. learn, how Let to read and write, that, church. how to memorize math without all this other crazy stuff and testing them to death. We're going to really bring back that joy of learning. We uh, want to teach handwriting. We want to teach cursive. Because what that does is it builds that frontal lobe. And we don't do things like that anymore in the public school. We're that's not right. teaching kids how to use their brain. And that's what we're going to do at Calvary. Every teacher that we've hired, we totally agree that we're not into this one-to-one -one technology. Right. Not that we won't use and utilize computers. But these kids aren't going to be on their phones. And they're not going to be on computers screen all day. The screen, the and we're screen. going to really teach them how to learn, how to be Amen. assertive, not aggressive. And Pastor Jeremy has really taught us everything we know about the woke culture here. But something you might not know, there's two parts I want to still talk about. One is, um, who, who remembers Title IX back in 1973? Title IX was really the thing so women could have sports. So the Biden administration has overseen taking Title IX, and what any school, all schools receive federal funding, they have to then let boys go into girls' bathrooms. They have to let boys play girls' sports if that's how they identify. I don't want to be a part of that delusion. Amen. The whole thing with the furries and cat litter and, you know, people say, oh, that's not really happening. It's What's happening. That? I used to take calls from it all the time at the Department of Education. It's insanity. And we're saying we're supposed to be okay with that. Otherwise, we're racist or homophobe or whatever. No, we're not. No, we're not. We're to be the light of the world. And I believe the glory of God and the light is coming on the children. And we're going to raise these kids up, not just to learn about the Bible, but to be able to share their faith, to share the love of Jesus, and, and really even go out in the world. So some people I've talked to um, in the last couple of months have said things like, well, my, my son or daughter only has a year left. I'm just going to leave them. I don't want them, want them to move. And I get that. But for me, what I want to cry out to those parents today is this. Give them a year. Right. Give them a year, raise them up, we'll teach them how to really stand for their faith when they enter that high school. And if you want to play sports, you legally have the right to go back to that school and play sports or do any activity you want. I've got great homeschooling parents in this room. Here's the thing you can also do. You can sign up for the ESAs, and you can come in and be a part of, maybe you just want your kids to come and be a part of science. Maybe you just want them to come and be a part of Bible. Maybe you just want them to come and be a part of math. You can do that. You don't have to come all day if you don't want to. There's all kinds of ways for funding and things that I'm, yeah, really familiar with. So thinking about that. And then last but not least, how many of you are aware of what's going on in college campuses right now oh, in the man. United States? <gasps> Over 120 college campuses are anti-Israel, pro-Hamas. What's kind of funny about that is if those people went over to Gaza, they'd kill half of them. Right. But <laughs> More than half. Funny sarcasm. But here's the thing. Do you think that started? Like Iowa State, uh, you, um, Iowa State in, in Iowa, University of Iowa, they had all kinds of re, you know, problems with that. Do you think that started in college? No. There's an indoctrination going on in our public school. In my school, uh, this, uh, they, this one guy wanted to teach why we should get rid of the electoral college and how bad it was. And, and I went into government class, and some of the kids in there didn't even know who the president and vice president were. And he's trying to rip down the electoral college. I mean, it's, sure the president it's there's knows. an agenda. What's that? I don't know that the president knows. It's, I don't, I don't I think mean. so. And then the whole woke agenda. So here's the thing that we want to do. The most important thing about a public school, about learning, 
you have to have joy. When that brain is opened up and they feel safe and they feel like people love them and want them there and we're talking about the love of Jesus, we can learn. Amen. I just don't think we can really learn well anymore in the public school. It's a war zone. And for those of you who are standing in the public school and, and you know, I, I bless you and I, I really encourage you to come on board with Calvary Christian <laughs> Academy because we're going to bring back the joy and the joy of the Lord. How many hours are, is a kid in school? Well, at the For very one minimum, 1,080 hours there in the public school. And that's not activities or before school, or after school. That's only learning. That's learning hours. So your kids are spending a lot more time, and it's a lot of pressure. 1,080 hours. Of that's just the teaching. What used to be education now coupled with indoctrination, that's a, that's yeah. a lot of time. Yeah, and it's become the norm. In a single dorm. year. Yeah, so be well, in prayer for Therese, for her thank husband you so Darren. Much. Be in prayer thank for you. my wife and I. Thank you so much, Therese. We're so blessed what you're doing, seriously. The fact is, we're blessed to be a part of, you know, building this new Christian academy. You know, the, the Lord put it on our heart a long time ago, four years ago, really made it clear we were supposed to do this. Um, and we have set out, you know, when we heard his voice, we set out to figure out how to do it. And that's why we're here in this place. For those of you that maybe are visiting us for the first time as a church, you need to know uh, the reason we came over to this space was uh, not so we could have more seats in the sanctuary, but praise the Lord, we did that. But because we needed those classrooms down there for kindergarten through eighth grade. But keep in mind, that's not the end of our vision. We want to create a high school, and we want to create a trade school. We believe that a high school uh, is the obvious next step in the education of these kids, and we want to do that within the next couple of years, short couple of years.